There aren't many good reasons to get up at 4am, but one of them is when you get to fly out to Miami. So Canon has released another new camera, the R8. It's the latest entry-level mirrorless, with the headline feature being that it shoots uncropped 4K60. That's lovely. And the chatter is that it will replace the EOS R and EOS RP, Canon's mirrorless OGs. If you're thinking about getting a new camera and splashing out on a new R8, then just hold your horses. I'm about videography and photography being about what you can do with the tools and not about the specs. A talented person with an average camera can do so much better than an average person with an incredible camera. I use both the EOS R and the RP, and it's the RP that I decided to bring with me on this trip to the States, where I'm filming a massive boat show. I'm filming on the RP now, but I chose it because it's smaller and easier to travel with, but basically exactly the same as the R. The RP is criminally underrated. It's often written off as rubbish for the video, just because when it came out, compared to the R, it didn't have 24p, among some small other things. But a lot has changed, and when you compare the specs between the R and the RP, the RP is six months newer, and the sensor size is basically the same. In fact, the RP has slightly better low light performance and even does focus bracketing, which the R doesn't. But in terms of real world stuff, the only thing I prefer about the R is the slightly bigger battery capacity and the fact that it's got a little cover that comes over the sensor when you take a lens off. Ultimately, though, it takes the same footage, although actually the RP does have a physical dial to change mode between photo and video mode, whereas the R doesn't. It has a stupid faffy little slidey touch bar thing that nobody has ever, ever used. So we've established that the R and the RP aren't worlds apart. So let's see where the R8 fits in. I've run out of time now. I've got to fly back to the UK. So I will finish this video back home. Miami has been a little bit mad. Not that I've seen much of it because we've been working pretty hard, but uh, it's quite nice. Wasn't sure how I'd feel about America, but it's warm. They've got good air con and had a, the greatest mojito of my life. And that's about as much as I can say about Miami. I guess this video is going to take a bit longer. I'm back in the UK and I I finally over the COVID, mostly. I'm still pretty exhausted, but uh, it's been snowing this week as well, which has been pretty mad. Uh, but finally, I'm able to get out and continue this video. What is this music? Hang on, kill this. Ridiculous. I'm going to talk about the R8 in a few seconds, but before I do, Miami was amazing for the hour or so that I got to experience it outside of the convention center. Every street I walked down and every corner I turned, there was something to photograph. And the RP is so portable, light and yet solid. It's so easy to use, especially with the RF lens and its programmable control ring that I use for ISO. And the image looks great. Anyway, you can make up your mind as to what you think of the visuals so far, but let's move on to this brand new 2023 camera, the R8. What's so great about it? Well, here's what's the same. It's basically the same body as the RP. They're both full frame and have 3.5 mil mic inputs, headphone outputs, micro HDMI outputs, one SD card slot, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and stabilization in both of them comes from optical stabilization on the RF lenses and optional digital IS in video mode. There's no IBIS and to some people, that's a good thing. The RP is actually rated at more shots per battery, 250 versus 220. Not a huge deal, but a little tick for the older model. Before I get onto the real magical stuff about the R8, there's a few minor differences compared to the RP that are barely worth mentioning, but I'll smash through them anyway. The RP sensor is 26 megapixels, but it's only 24 on the R8. ISO on the RP goes up to 40,000, but on the R8, it goes up to 102,000. Who's shooting at 102,000? And what the f does that look like? There's a slightly improved autofocus that recognizes more animals like this guy or something. Hey, dude. What's going down? The R8 is slightly better in low light by one stop. 
The R8 does have a slightly faster viewfinder, 120 frames a second versus 60. But when was the last time you thought to yourself, really need a faster viewfinder? Okay, to talk about what's so amazing about the R8, let's go somewhere else. Let's go up there. You can't see it, it's too far away, but we're gonna go up there and that's, uh, well, you'll find out. I'm up here at Wellington Monument as the sun is going down and we approach the end of the video, which must mean it's finally time to talk about the winning features of the R8. It shoots in 4K 60 compared to 4K 25 on the RP. Both can shoot 1080 60. There's no 4K crop on the R8 where it's 1.6 times on the RP. The new camera shoots in 10 bit, whereas the older camera is in 8 bit and the newer camera has no 30 minute recording limit. The RP uses contrast detection AF in 4K, which isn't quite as fast or precise as the newer dual pixel AF. The R8 has a higher shutter speed and more frames per second, but if these are important factors for you, then you might be looking at the wrong camera. So there's definitely some good stuff in there. This isn't a side-by-side -side test. Hell, I don't even have the R8 in my hands, so it's slightly unfair. It's not even overly comprehensive, but that's not the point. The point is the RP is a damn good camera. We have to get out of the mindset that the newest thing with slightly improved specs on paper is a must buy and the slightly older options must be useless. And by shining a light on the RP, hopefully that helps you ask if the R8's newer features justify the extra price tag for you personally based on what you use a camera for. Buying new, the R8 is about 700 pounds more. You're looking at 1,700 versus 1,000. The RP second hand is bonkers value at about 700 quid. If you can easily afford it and you're a full-time pro, then why are you even asking yourself the question? Just get the R8. Anyone else? Spend the extra save money on trips and adventures to give yourself better environments to create content. That's it from me. It's been a hell of a video from Miami to Wellington Monument. It's taken me in ages to put together as well. Anyway. On to the next one, see you again. This is definitely as much a video aimed at me as it is anyone else. Stop spending money. But having said all that,